know that cluster headaches are the worst headaches known to humans? I'll start the lecture with a quick question. What is the common name or nickname given to cluster headaches? A. Stress headache B. Thunderclap headache C. Suicidal headache The answer is suicidal headache. It is a scary nickname, isn't it? This is because the severe intensity of pain leads to suicidal ideation in some patients. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss all about cluster headache. The queries which we will be solving are why they are called cluster headaches, how they are caused, then which is the population in which they are commonly observed, what are their characteristics, how they are classified, what are the factors that trigger them? And in the end, as doctors, what we can do to treat such patients? It is very obvious from its name that it comes in episodes. Patients can have one to eight episodes in a day and each episode lasts for a minimum of 15 minutes to a maximum of 180 minutes. It can continue for one week or several weeks or even months. To understand this further, look into this picture. The vertical lines represent days in a week and the red dots represent attacks in a day. Patient can have one or several weeks of such pain and then there is a gap and the patient is totally pain free for months or even years. And then there is another cluster of headaches lasting for weeks and so on. I hope the pattern of attacks is well understood. Now let's move on to pathophysiology of cluster headache. Now the pathophysiology. Actually, we don't know what is the exact cause behind it, but I will introduce you to a strongly agreed hypothesis. In our brain, within hypothalamus, there is an area which is responsible for circadian rhythm of our body. This area is called biological clock. It is suggested that this area could be involved in causing this illness. There are two factors that support this hypothesis. One is periodicity and second is that usually the attacks start at night almost at the same time during rapid eye movement sleep and awaken the patient from sleep. Along with this, central disinhibition of trigeminal autonomic pathways, mainly the overactivation of parasympathetic system have been found. And that is why it is accompanied by autonomic symptoms, which we are going to discuss in a while. The cluster headache is predominantly found in males. Ratio between males and females is 3 is to 1. Usually, the patients which are seen are between ages of 20 to 40 years. Now, let's jump into our next section to see which clinical features does cluster headache carry. The cluster headache is characterized by unilateral, extremely severe pain on one side of head, which can be located in orbital, supraorbital, and temporal regions. Patients who suffer from this describe it as excruciating, stabbing, lancinating, explosive, and sharp in character. 90% of the patients are agitated and restless. They can't sit still or lie down. The headache itself is not life-threatening, but because of the severity, suicidal ideation have been observed in some patients. A very characteristic feature is that it comes with autonomic symptoms, which are ipsilateral rhinorrhea, means nasal stuffiness, lacrimation or eye watering, conjunctival congestion means redness of eye, and also sometimes ipsilateral Horner syndrome. You must be aware of it, but let me tell you briefly about it. Horner syndrome includes ptosis, which means drooping of eyelid, Meiosis, which means constriction of pupil, and anhydrosis, which means absence of sweating on that particular side. As I told you in pathophysiology, overactivation of parasympathetic system is responsible for this. Broadly, it is classified into two categories. 
Number one is episodic, which means the clusters are separated by a pain-free period of at least three months and the patient remains well during this remission period. And the second one is chronic, which persists for more than one year and the attacks are either without remission or the remission period is less than three months. In some cases of chronic cluster headache, the Horner syndrome may persist between the attacks. It has not very obvious triggering factors just like other forms of headache, but many people report some relationship with alcohol. Allergens means histamine release in response to them, ingestion of specific types of food, seasonal changes. The evidence behind this is that in some patients, it comes back in the same season every year. Tobacco smoking, stress, and the nitroglycerin, which are vasodilators frequently used in angina. Now let's try to learn that how we make its diagnosis and is there any other type of headache that mimics cluster headache. Diagnosis of cluster headache is basically clinical. All you need to do is to take a thorough history and do complete examination. The periodicity and rhythmic pattern is very specific to it and not found in any other type of headache. Also note that lab investigations or imaging studies are not helpful except in cases where there is need for excluding other types of headache. And that is why we should keep in mind its common differentials. The common differential diagnoses of cluster headache are migraine, uncontrolled hypertension, eye disorders like acute optic neuritis and acute glaucoma, intracranial bleed, intracranial neoplasm, trigeminal neuralgia, and chronic paroxysmal hemicrania. Now you must be thinking that migraine is also a very severe kind of unilateral headache. So maybe there is some confusion between them. So here are some points which will help you differentiate between them. First one is duration. Migraine lasts for a longer period of time, minimum 4 hours until 72 hours, while you know that episode of cluster headache is 15 minutes till 3 hours maximum. Second is pattern. Like in migraine, there are 2 to 4 episodes in a month while you already learned that cluster headache can be 1 to 8 episodes in a single day. The severity of migraine is reported till 6 to 7 out of 10, while cluster headache is much more severe and patient reported as 10 over 10. In migraine, the patient prefers to sit in a calm, dark and quieter place, while in cluster headache, the patient is agitated, restless, moves here and there in the room and wants to bang his head against a hard surface. Migraine is preceded by a period of aura which warns the patient and the patient tend to take abortive medication at right time, while cluster headaches usually begins without warnings. Migraine patients suffer from nausea, vomiting, disliking of light and sounds means photophobia and phonophobia while as i told you earlier that cluster headache is characteristically accompanied by ipsilateral rhinorrhea lacrimation and horner syndrome so till now we got to know that cluster headache is very severe type of headache and associated with features which seem difficult to control but let me tell you that its treatment is simple and easy and it responds very well to treatment the very first treatment which we offer to the patient is abortive which is just to get rid of acute episode of pain first line of treatment is oxygen what oxygen Yes, you heard me right. We give the patient oxygen with non-rebreather mask 12 to 15 liters in a minute for 15 minutes. The second option is triptans, which are 5-hydroxytryptamine agonists. It includes sumatriptan, which can be given as 6 mg subcutaneous injection, which has a rapid onset of action, or intranasally 20 mg per spray. 
Another drug of this category is Zolmitriptan which is given at a dose of 5 to 10 mg as a nasal spray. Then another option is dihydroergotamines which are given 0.5 to 1 mg intramuscularly or intravenously. Now the question arises that it is such a dreadful headache and it comes in clusters so can we prevent it? The answer is yes we can. The second part of treatment is prophylactic. The purpose of which is to prevent horrible agonizing attacks of headache. All the preventive medication are oral and these are lithium carbonate which is given at a dose of 300 mg per day and can be increased to 900 to 1200 mg in divided doses. The second one is verapamil which is a calcium channel blocker and given at a dose of 240 mg per day and can be increased to 960 mg per day. The third one is topiramate which is basically an anti-epileptic drug and it is given at a dose of 100 to 400 mg per day. One important point here is that the medication which I just mentioned especially topiramate and lithium take weeks or so to be fully effective. So what to do during that time? So during this duration we do something called effective transitional therapy. It not only terminates the cluster headache cycle but also prevents immediate recurrence and can you guess which medication is this? Yes, these are steroids and they are effective in 70 to 80% of cases. So we give prednisolone at a dose of 60 mg per day for 5 days and then withdraw it over 7 to 10 days. Here I want to emphasize on one point that steroids are used only as transitional therapy and not for aborting the acute attacks. And of course, along the medication, we should instruct the patient to keep a headache diary to monitor the effect of therapy and also to keep an eye on triggering factors and then to avoid them and maintaining a healthy lifestyle is always helpful.